Hey guys, uh, today I'll be trying to explain uh, one research paper that has come out, which is uh, uh, like um, on archive uh, six months back, which is titled uh, "Solving the Rubik's Cube Without Human Knowledge," and uh, it's been done by four, uh, three um, PhD students from University of California, and um, they themselves are not cubers, but uh, I contacted them and uh, they have tried and used a very uh, dope algorithm to try and solve a uh, Rubik's cube. So um, what they have tried and do is uh, they have tried to solve or uh, they have developed an algorithm to solve a cube uh, without um, without any kind of feature engineering or without any kind of uh, brute forceness or uh, without any kind of uh, any kind of uh, input uh, like it's like they have they have tried and use a technique which is called reinforcement learning so reinforcement learning is some kind of a machine learning technique which tries and uh, imitate the human being so uh, when you see a human being uh, as a kid they um, learn things on their own um, without um, they are they are not coded by anyone they are not coded by their parents how to uh, do things they figure it out on themselves and that's what uh, uh, this uh, reinforcement learning uh, algorithms try and do so um, uh, that's that's not what they exactly do they use some kind of a graph theory concept uh, and they use uh, machine learning concepts and a uh, lot of computation uh, they use a lot of computation power more than even humans use to arrive at that uh, conclusion but yeah the deep reinforcement learning is kind of a dope uh, machine learning technique which is out there and two years back uh, there was a software called AlphaGo which was released and uh, it played phenomenal go phenomenal go <laughs> and uh, it defeated the uh, world champion in go um, they have tried and used uh, th that uh, technique on the Rubik's Cube but um, unfortunately for Rubik's Cube uh, spoiler alert uh, brute force is somewhat more reliable uh, reinforcement learning uh, is um, it's an overkill to uh, the uh, Rubik's, cube, uh, Rubik's cube puzzle so uh, like I've uh, I've like read this paper uh, top to bottom and this paper is a kind of a proof of concept paper there is no um, insights a, a, a cuber will get out of it like uh, you won't be able to find uh, new techniques uh, for solving cube out of it. It's just some kind of a solver uh, that is competing up with uh, the standard well-established uh, uh, Kochiamba's uh, algorithm. So yeah, so they have just uh, tried and show. Um, uh, they have just shown that Rubik's cube. It's it's um, Rubik's cube is a sparse reward. Um, puzzle so there is only one solved state where all the uh, six sides have the same color so this is a, a hard task for um, reinforcement learning uh, that's why um, they have tried and used some kind of a new um, technique to form the algorithm uh, they are uh, like in our uh, reinforcement learning there's uh, two or three things that happen um, in parallel kind of thing there's uh, one concept called uh, Monte Carlo uh, tree search uh, which is a uh, graph traversing uh, thing uh, which is like tough to explain right now but uh, yeah it's uh, one of the crucial things in uh, uh, using reinforcement learning for gameplay then there's a policy and a value so a, a policy network and a value network so the policy network uh, is some kind of a, what can I say it's some kind of a thing that suggests uh, what the algorithm should do in order to reach the goal or the reward so um, it kind of um, it's kind of a com complicated thing uh, if you want to understand policy network completely you have to understand why um, uh, like the person who made reinforcement learning Richard Sutton why he thought um, this was the best way to go and then you have to understand a lot of uh, statistics uh, probability and mathematics because uh, that's what it's based on okay so uh, yeah so that's what uh, reinforcement learning is and we already don't know what Rubik's cube is uh, yeah so what they have tried to use is some kind of a breadth first search kind of a um, architecture they have used uh, auto didactic which is a fancy name of uh, some kind of a breadth first search um, 
listing out all these possibilities and then cutting off the less promising outcomes by some kind of uh, um, optimizer or uh, some kind of uh, uh, what do you call it a policy uh, policy gradient method or some kind of thing and uh, there's Monte Carlo which is well established but they haven't used uh, pure Monte Carlo here because the uh, Rubik's Cube is not some kind of uh, fuzzy gameplay kind of thing it's just one reward all the six sides have the same color it's that simple so the machine uh, it can't just go super random at start it needs to have some kind of a structure and that's why that's why they have used this kind of algorithm okay so um they have tried and uh, implement this edi into uh, monte carlo and they have tried and uh, create a policy uh, network so the way they have uh, created the policy network they haven't fully illustrated in the paper and their code is also not open source so i just can't uh, check it but they said uh, they have tried um, to um, use this kind of a technique and the motivation behind it is uh, unclear but the main motivation to me looks like um, since the rubik's cube has just one reward uh, it's better to use some kind of a uh, semi uh, brute force iterator kind of technique to um, form the policy and uh, thus uh, the algorithm that they have chosen is asynchronous uh, advantage actor critic oh my god this will take me so much long to explain so i won't even bother but it, this is one form of uh, reinforcement um, reinforcement method so actor critic is some kind of if you know uh, gan networks gan not the gan cube but gan networks is uh, generative adversarial networks so the, w the way they work is uh, there are two or three neural networks competing and uh, uh, that's how um, the the best outcome gets pushed out so i mean that's somewhat it works in this way but uh, it's quite different in reinforcement learning case okay so yeah this is a history of the cube yada 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 and uh, what is the cube it turns like this there is a uh, uh, the uh, like a god's number first it was 26 then 25 24 then brought down to 20 and google uh, around 10 years back they proved it by finding out uh, it is exactly 20 by uh, like just uh, solving the entire cube solving every possibility every pos uh, 10 power 18 or uh, 10 power 17 18 possibilities so yeah they are forming the policy and um, i really don't know how to explain this policy but they have given some mathematical structure later on so yeah we'll see that now they are talking about the cube uh, we already know david singh master who was really nice a uh, cube enthusiast back in the day he developed this uh, notation and uh, we already know that a cube is um, we already know how the cubes get permitted edges are edges corners are corners there are 20 pieces and uh, we know the law of the cube like uh, two flipped edges uh, three twisted corners in the same direction yada 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 and so on okay so this is um okay how do i explain this this is a state function a state function can be something like uh, this uh, one equation called bellman equation which is always used in reinforcement learning but uh, they haven't used it yet they are just formed a simple state function uh, which is uh, taking the input cube state and some kind of a scalar reward they're adding it up and they are doing it some for some uh, phase turns for u f l d like that and this thing is the training sample which is fed into the policy network and then they are getting some kind of a uh, they're getting some kind of a algorithm that is uh, churning out the best solution yeah yo again about uh, adi they have named this uh, uh, this algorithm as a deep cube and they are just telling how they are forming the value network and coupling up this value and uh, policy pair so this is all the uh, reinforcement learning thing which i basically can't explain at the very basic level but it's heavy math it's heavy math uh, i can say that <laughs> so they this is the algorithm that they have tried to use to uh, update the cube state uh, the way the cube state is being updated is uh, the cube state is having one additional phase turn like f prime or u prime uh, b prime and 
we are seeing if there is a positive reward or a negative reward and if it's a positive reward uh, that uh, thing is pushed in that research so yeah that's the way it's being computing uh, computed out which is kind of a uh, very computationally heavy thing to do but this is how they go about updating policy value networks since the um, the sol um, the rubik's cube is a very sparse um, reward kind of a uh, environment they have tried to weigh, weigh give weight to the sample so that's the additional thing that they have done okay now they are explaining that solver they are trying to build a, a search tree uh, from any start position s naught and then uh, f uh, do some kind of a simulation uh, and simulation which is some kind of a traversal so uh, it's not self play uh, which is there in a uh, game theory but it's some kind of iterator uh, mechanism that is trying to um, find the next set of the queue then um, they are just telling how they uh, they are updating the action and um, the p tree policy which is um, all pure reinforcement learning well established 20 year old theory so they have used uh, asynchronous activity right yeah so uh, that's how uh, they they proceed out with the theory and then uh, they simulate out all these episodes and get the result which is the shortest path the path will solve the cube and the shorter the solution the better so uh, that's the aim now this is the key uh, result that they got um, we already know um, Kochiamba and Corf is a brute force approach and uh, in reinforcement learning there are some uh, policy algorithms which uh, rely on the greedy search so they have use just pure greedy and brute forced it and they found that uh, with pure greedy you get about 25 moves as the super low bound with uh, brute force coach emma you get 20 moves but here uh we're using deep cube since it's a like a mach deep machine learning technique um any scramble distance is given uh, it's solving in it re in re relatively um same uh computation so this just shows uh, how uh, messed up uh, machine learning models get because they are taking so much of data and s they are doing so much of computation that they don't um they don't uh, uh like a brute force algorithm at 50 moves it will stop and at 20 moves it will stop and it will evaluate okay 15 moves 20 moves this kind of scramble that kind of scramble this thing is not evaluating in such a way it's just seeing multiple states at a time and seeing a lot of probabilities expectation yada 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 like that yeah. so the key results that they have shown is um yeah they have used uh, this gpu 32 core and they have uh, for um benchmarking their result they have used the normal cube explorer cochamba two stage solver they have used this curve ida which is used for big cube solving four by four five by five sol solving they have used the normal uh, naive deep queue which is using a pure greedy uh, algorithm in the value network and then they got this uh, some kind of a scramble earth comparison and this deep cube uh, performed quite well when there's less number of scrambles and it performed quite average when uh, the number of scrambles are more because the brute force uh, algorithms they they are quite good uh, reinforcement learning uh, it's quite um, then you have to figure out a lot of things yeah yeah okay so uh they are just telling uh, all the comparisons and how uh the, the, the scramble length change when uh, they did this uh, scramble solution length comparison so what they learned out of it it's nothing that great what they learned is um there's some kind of commutators conjugate which we already know if you're doing three blind you already know commutator conjugate and uh, we are in FMC, we have the techniques like uh, pre moves, insertions, uh, s uh, pseudo blocks, uh, NIS, uh, pseudo NIS, and many more. So, um, this is what uh, they uh, they didn't reach that level. They just said that um, the Rubik's Cube, they, the algorithm tries to form 2 by 2 by 2 block and uh, then try and use a um, lot of. Uh, like value iteration kind of thing to get some kind of nice solution and then they have compiled up this graph which shows uh, the normalized probabilities of conjugates so this is the conjugate and any 
kind of uh, three move uh, insertion. So this is kind of weird because it's tough to interpret this um, result. But what they are trying to show is um, I really don't know. <laughs> okay, what they are trying to show, but yeah, they are just trying to show um, there uh, like. There's some kind of uh, high level techniques that this algorithm is learning, but it's still not that uh, level uh, as we have reached in our FMC theory. We already are really good in FMC. Like, uh, I I like the world record is 18 moves on somewhat a uh, little bit lucky scrammer, but the world record is 18 moves and um, uh, we already have a lot of techniques and this algorithm is not giving us any new techniques. Uh, so it's just a proof of concept kind of thing okay so what they have tried to do is um they are they are saying okay we have done it for three by three we'll extend it out for another uh, an, uh other uh cubes twisty puzzles and uh, n-dimensional puzzles twisty puzzles which is kind of a overstretch and uh, lame because <laughs> they have not achieved the best benchmark results on three by three itself so the work is uh, half cooked they have not uh, done it completely so once they reach up to um, the benchmark level uh, like getting always 18 most solution uh, which is even at par with brute force and they try and get some kind of a new technique that um, even we have not thought uh, in um, fierce move event any new cube theory any new cube technique any new cube method uh, they haven't found it it's just basic uh, cube uh, two by two block building that the solver does the the shortest path does so yeah the what they have uh, given a very uh, not so satisfying conclusion this mirrors a strategy that advanced human speed solvers employ when solving the cube where they prioritize matching together corner and edge cubelets before placing them in their correct locations which is complete bullshit this is correct but why would they want a solver which imitates the human solver human solver does it in about 40 to 50 moves i use rue so about 40 moves 45 moves cfops or maybe it's okay uh, 50 moves so um we don't want to imitate the human solver we want to find new kind of high level high-end techniques in fmc and this um, this reinforcement algorithm fails to reach up to that uh, level of uh, uh, the solving uh, we we can't get that solutions out of it so it's still work in progress i'm also dabbling into it uh, i can't say uh, much because um, i'm new to this uh, reinforcement learning uh, arena but yeah this is a good uh, good step forward and i hope that a uh, lot of work can be done on it because uh, a Rubik's cube is a good uh, kind of a puzzle because the reward there's only one reward and uh, to design a reinforcement learning algorithm is quite uh, tough. Uh, I hope um, this um, uh, this was a valid explanation to this paper and you'll just check it out. I'll have the paper link in the description. Uh, if you want, um, if you have any questions, you can just uh, comment it out uh, in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about machine learning and how um, what exactly is reinforcement learning you can check out my other youtube channel uh, which i'll have in the description uh, like uh, i have a youtube channel on uh, go uh, on machine learning uh, where is machine learning not written the whole paper is without machine learning written okay well, yeah okay one paper on a machine uh, one channel youtube channel on machine learning one on go one on chess and i have my cubing channel which is ruin blind so yeah go check them out uh, I hope, uh, uh, yeah, it will. Uh, this paper helps instigate some um, interest in machine learning for you guys. Uh, thank you and bye.